Hello, good evening. The Labour leadership contest descended further into chaos today as a High Court ruling reopened the question of who can vote. The party lost a legal challenge to its rules, banning anyone who joined after January the 12th from taking part unless they paid an extra £25. But tonight, Labour said it would appeal the decision, which affects 130,000 supporters, most of whom are thought to back Jeremy Corbyn. Sky's chief political correspondent, John Craig, reports. Jeremy Corbyn, the leader of the Labour Party, now and in September, and the next Prime Minister. Corbyn mania in Bristol at the Labour leader's latest leadership campaign rally. After the High Court ruled that new members previously barred from voting could now take part, but then the party said it would appeal, Mr Corbyn said everyone was welcome. Some of you might be members of the Labour Party, some of you might not be members of the Labour Party, some of you might not even in the past have been supporters of the Labour Party. But I hope, if you're not, you will recognise that what we're doing is opening up and changing politics to bring people in. <laughs> Mr Corbyn's challenger, campaigning in Newcastle, welcomed the prospect of more people voting but warned of a Labour split. If he wins this contest, I'm deeply worried about the future of our party. I'm deeply worried that we will split. And I'm afraid I cannot put my confidence back in him as a leader of this party because he is not a leader. When Mr Corbyn was elected last year, registered supporters paying £3 and full members paying £25 could both vote. This year, Labour's national executive decided only supporters who signed up before January could vote, unless they paid a full fee of £25 within 48 hours. Five recently joined members went to the High Court and said that decision was unfair. This was the second legal challenge against the rules for the Labour leadership contest agreed by the party's national executive. Both have gone Mr Corbyn's way. In the first, a judge threw out a challenge by a Labour donor, Michael Foster, against the decision to allow Mr Corbyn on the ballot paper without having to seek nominations. It was four weeks ago that the executive gave Mr Corbyn good news on nominations, but bad news on barring new members from voting. Announcing the move to defend the executive's decision in the Court of Appeal, a Labour spokesman said, the Procedures Committee of the NEC has decided that the Labour Party will appeal this ruling in order to defend the NEC's right as Labour's governing body to uphold the rule book, including the use of freeze dates. This is a small group of people, half a dozen, meeting in a secret, in a closed room against, against the decision of the High Court, which proclaimed very, very firmly and clearly that our members should have the right to vote. Our tradition is a democratic party. This is six people denying nearly 140,000 members their right to vote. I don't think that's acceptable. Thank you very much. But as Mr Corbyn continues touring the country holding campaign rallies, a further legal battle threatens to put the election timetable in jeopardy. John Craig, Sky News. Well, John Jones is live from Westminster and another boost for Jeremy Corbyn tonight. John, tell us more. Just a few hours after he won a victory in the High Court, there was another big boost uh, for Mr Corbyn, which really does strengthen his grip on the Labour Party. Six people on the momentum slate uh, for election in the constituency section of the elections for the National Executive Committee all won. Clean sweep, and uh, all elected, knocking a couple of uh, more mainstream members of the NEC off uh, the, in the election of party members, the grassroots members, many of whom have as we're learning in the past year or so, are overwhelmingly pro-Jeremy Corbyn. It's good news for Mr Corbyn in the leadership contest against Owen Smith. It also gives him more control in the party. Uh, he's won, uh, he won a significant victory a couple of weeks ago when the NEC backed him standing without getting nominations, but of course he lost the vote on uh, the uh, cut-off point that was the subject of the High Court ruling. So uh, he strengthened his grip on the NEC. Um, in two ways, really, uh, the, 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 uh, they, both the court ruling and now this makes his position that much stronger. It will worry uh, those MPs who fear that Mr Corbyn and his supporters are taking over the party. Um, it's a, it's a, a great boost for the Momentum campaign group. As for the legal battle, well, the uh, Court of Appeal hearing is going to be on Thursday. Now, um, 
John McDonnell was saying he hopes that it won't derail the timetable too much. But of course, if it's a long and protracted legal battle, uh, the dates could really be threatened. It's uh, it's a fortnight's time, the 22nd of August, when the ballot papers go out. Labour plans to announce its leader uh, on the 24th of September. Mr Corbyn actually wants it the day before because there's a Labour Women's Conference on that Saturday before the conference in Liverpool gets underway. Owen Smith is now saying he wants the whole thing extended to beyond the Labour Party conference. I'm not sure he'll get much support for that. I think a lot of people in the Labour Party want it over and done with. And after the events in which in the High Court and in the elections for the constituency section for the NEC, a victory for Mr Corbyn is looking more and more likely. John Craig, thank you.